How's it going my truant people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor, back with the draft analysis for your Lake District Spirits in the GDL, that's the Gala Defenders League, I think, could be Gala Defense League, but I'm pretty sure it's Gala Defenders League. And if you are new around here, please do consider subscribing, keeping up with this season. I've drafted a really fun team, as you might have guessed from the thumbnail. So I think we're going to have some pretty fast-paced, exciting games this season. And if you're not new around here, if you've watched some games before, don't forget we have a subscriber Discord linked down in the description, which you can join where we talk about draft league stuff and all sorts of stuff. A really, really cool community there. So don't forget to join that if you haven't already. Now, if you've been around the channel a while and you're thinking, why is this late district spirits? What happened to the Bolan Bovines? Well... For those of you who don't know, I usually play in the team name, the Bolan Bovines. When I played that team name, I used my friend Office, my closest friends in this community, who helped me to build, mock, etc, etc. But this season, I'm not going that tryhard. I'm not going to be using them every week. I'm not going to be using them at all, really, to be honest with you. I'm just going to be building, prepping myself, and playing for the joy of the game. I had a tough season in EWT, where I drafted a team I didn't like, I played badly, and it got the better of me, and I didn't like the videos I put out as a result. So this season... We're not taking it too seriously, we're just here to have fun, we're here to play some good quality games. I still am a competitive person by nature, so I will be trying to win every week, but I won't be doing all the behind the scenes tryhard stuff. So, when you see the Lake District Spirits, it means, hey, this is going to be a fun season without all the tryhard prep, the tryhard mocks and that stuff. It's just a way of knowing it's going to be more relaxed, more entertainment based content. All of that housekeeping out of the way. I'm feeling good. This team is exciting. Now, this league, just to give you a summary, you can see on the layout there, has GMAX in it. I voted against it. My personal opinion is GMAX has no place in singles whatsoever. However, I lost the vote and I'm not a little bitch, so I'm happy to go along with it. And if we have to go along with it, I had one GMAX that I really wanted for no competitive reason, purely for design, because there's only one GMAX. Well, that's not true. There's one GMAX Pokemon I love above all others, even though I love some others design wise, admittedly. So, Round one, I decided to pick up my G Max pick. As I picked up Bangs, our G Max Venusaur. I love this dopey thing. Look at that hairstyle. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, I love it so much. I should say as well, before I get too carried away, everyone else's links will be down in the description if I remember. So go and check out all the other content creators that we put up their draft analysis today as well. And also, week one, I've already recorded and played. I hadn't had a haircut yet. I've had a haircut today. Tell me down below how fresh. Do I look? Am I looking fresh? I like it. I feel it. Uh, but so when you see week one's game and my hair is magically got three months worth of growth on it and you're like, whoa, his hair grows fast. No, no. It's already pre-recorded. Uh, but yeah, check out everybody else. We got Venusaur. I'm getting sidetracked. We got Venusaur. Such a cool design. Um, you will have seen from the thumbnail I was picking up Rain. I'm sure I would have done that somehow in the title and thumbnail. So I thought this thing would be funky on Rain. Chlorophyll was banned, um, understandably. It would probably be broken with Chlorophyll. So I can't get Sun Weather Balls, but I can get Rain Weather Balls. And hey, um, there might be some times where that's useful. I don't know. Uh, fire types, when I don't want to click Earth Power, is stronger than Earth Power. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I just think this thing's really cool. Having a grass type in rain is never a bad thing. Grounded poison right off the bat. Um, I just wanted to use it. If I was going to have to use G Max, which I have no problem with it when the vote, then I want to use the G Max I want to see on Wi Fi. And I wanted to see this thing so bad. So maybe a bit early round one without chlorophyll. Um, but I don't care. I just, I'm, I'm so happy with bangs. Look at him. What a lad. What an absolute lad. Round two. Knowing that I wanted to pick up Rain at some point, but that it could get sniped, I decided to pick something really, really early. Dracovish had gone, uh, I think, the pick before this, or the pick after I took Venusaur. And uh, if I was picking up Rain, I didn't want to just lose to opposing Dracovish in Rain. So I decided to go pretty early, because there wasn't anything else I super wanted, and take Agnostic, our Seismitoad. So now, I apologize, I'm covering parts of the name as well with my chair, but we're just going to have to deal with that. Um, yeah, I, I, if I have to play Dracovish in rain, I want to have a really good Dracovish check. And now I have what was the premier Dracovish check in OU before it was banned. Um, yes, this thing does like wish support, but even without it, it can do a job on a rain offense team. Gives me my first Swift Swim user if I do pick up rain. And if I don't pick up rain, if I get sniped on it, hey, look, a Firewater Grass core starting with Seismotope plus Venusaur is no bad thing. These two can definitely mesh together uh, in other ways so that's pretty cool nice stealth rocker right off the bat and one of the important things is uh, my good friend checkmate ben recently drafted a rain team and he really struggled with opposing 
water types. Uh, he didn't have big fat water resists so or immunity, so he was really struggling to handle opposing offensive waters. Well, now we have that straight away, and I'm really, really happy with that. So, yeah, nice, nice, nice pick here. Then, moving on, we do pick up Rain. We do manage to get Nigel the Pelipper on the team. Uh, I will never ever agree with the statement that Politoed is a better rain setter for offensive rain. I think Politoed is a perfectly viable rain setter. If it's paired with things like Gudra, Ferrothorn, um, Toxapex, like I've seen any number of defensive rain teams, Mega Scissor, regular Scissor to some extent. I agree, fine, Politoed is fine on those teams. If you want to run six rain sweepers and just go ham with offense you want you turn on your team yes you can run eject button on politoed no that isn't as good as having damp rock you turn it just isn't so yeah we picked up pelipper nigel uh i think he's the best rain set for offensive rain and i will die on this hill uh but let me know what you guys think because i know a lot of people love politoed and hey its design is is probably better than pelipper's but Ah, we're not here for designs, we're here for fun rain. Uh, so yeah, it does what it says on the tin, gives us a ground immunity straight away as well, defog and all that good stuff, as well as a nice pivot. Weather ball is a pretty nice buff for this thing, but it's minor in the grand scheme of things. Next up, we take a Heliolisk. We've got Dove here, our second dry skin mon in Wi-Fi leagues in Gen 8. Dove, the Heliolisk, partnering Nivea, the Toxicroak from UBL. I was pretty pleased with that. Um, there were a few sort of weather teams forming. Uh, I think Frosted had... Uh, Excadrill, I think um, Ultra Player had uh, G-Max Charizard. I didn't like that. I didn't want this boy to go on to potential um, Sun teams with Charizard. I know Charizard can't set up the Sun for itself with this G-Max move, but it loves having Torkoal for solar power. Um, and obviously, of course, Excadrill loves sand. Now, as it happens, I don't think either of those people picked up Weather Setters. I think I was the only one with a Weather Setter, or at least a Weather Team, but... By the by, I couldn't risk it. I had to take it early. Um, so we picked up Heliolisk. Great speed tier. As I say, another thing like Seismitoad that means that I'm not just going to be beaten down by offensive water types, which I think is so important. Um, Weather Ball on this thing is a pretty nice buff, although of course it has Surf as well. Thunder, Volt Switch, etc, etc. You know the deal with Heliolisk. Um, just a great rain wall breaker with Life Orb and Dry Skin giving you back your Life Orb recoil. This thing can really, really start to wall break it in rain and, uh, and be a potential cleaner And what is a relatively slow metagame still. This thing speeds is fantastic at 108 so 108 or 109 can't remember either way it's good uh next up though we're, we're bringing in the heavy hitters and i have to before i announce underbite i have to give a huge thank you to root because root wanted this thing and he hit me up and he was like look i've seen your team i think you want this thing i want this thing why shouldn't i snipe you kind of thing and i was like look root you don't want this you want what did I advise? Pre-Marina. You want Pre-Marina. And I, he did want Pre-Marina. 100% that was honest advice. I would never lie to a friend and tell them to take something for my own gain if I thought they were better off having the thing they wanted. But he stepped back and he was like, I'm not convinced, but okay. And he didn't take Barrascuda. I wanted this thing so bad. I was like, thank you, Root. Thank you. Honestly, go check out his draft analysis. Tell me that Pre-Marina doesn't fit his team better because it definitely does. But um, yeah, I'm still very grateful for him for, for kind of passing it up. He was the pick directly before me as well, so he really could have fucked me there. Um, I've been wanting to use this thing. If you guys keep up with my OU lives, I use some Barracuda rain teams in OU. This thing's fun. Like, I think without rain, mm, it's very mid, but with rain, it's good. This thing's good. It hits like a truck banded. You can run adamant against pretty much any team, because this thing at one, two, one, three, three space speed? I don't know. His space speed stat's ridiculous. With Swift Swim doubling that speed stat, you can be adamant against every Scarfer in the game. You can outspeed things like Halucha after a terrain boost, so you don't have to worry about that shit sweeping you. So good. So good. Uh, flip turn as well. Really, really nice momentum on this thing, so you can lure in their bulky grass or water. Flip turn out. Come in with your Venusaur and start wrecking shit. Up. So straight away we have a little bit of synergy going on there. Same with Heliolisk, you know, you can hit that U-turn if you're not in rain and you can't power up your weather balls on their ground type. And you can bring in your Venusaur to click Giga Drain or G-Max uh, Vine Lash, I think. Good synergy, good synergy, good team. I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Got some firepower, some cool mons. I'm, I'm a fan, I'm a fan. That's, that's Underbite the Barrascuda, look at that man. Next up, I technically didn't pick this. We were allowed, we had a grace window to make some trades. And at this point in the draft, I didn't know that we could pick up two tier threes. You guys can see that. Nope, that direction. You guys can see that over there. We can have two tier threes. I didn't know that. I thought this was a 10-mon draft. I'm an idiot. What can I say? 
So I wasn't planning for anything here. I found out we could pick up two tier threes. I kind of just impulse picked something without really thinking it through. Um, and I picked up Rabombi. Now after the draft, the thing that I actually wanted in this slot got dropped. So I was able to make some trades. And the thing that I actually wanted here was Zoroark. Now the reason that I wanted Tati the Zoroark is because if you want to disguise something as Barraskewda and they have to go into their bulky water or grass to try and take that banded liquidation and then they suddenly take a... Uh, choice specs dark pulls that's fantastic if you bring in your venus or you disguise it as your venus or you bring it in they want to go in something thinking they've got to take a hit from a g max mon and then you wear down their g max check with the specs dark pulls fantastic so now they have fixed this thing's ability on wi-fi if you guys don't know last generation it used to tell you when you had some of moves against zoroark not the pokemon it's disguised as now they fixed that on wi-fi i actually think this thing especially on a rain team in a dynamax meta i think it's really got a niche and it's one of those pokemon that everyone thinks could be good but no one ever sees it used well so maybe it's gonna flop maybe i'm gonna be disappointed in tatty but I'm hoping I can prove people wrong. I'm hoping I can prove people wrong and we, we can do something with this and, and it can uh, it can do work. So shout out to Six Foot Hacks Leo for dropping this um, and allowing me to pick it up instead of Rabombi because I like this fit better. I don't really need webs. Um, then we're picking up some more rain offense, boys. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten that we've got a rain team here. We're picking up Twister the Kingdra with that hurricane in the rain now. Shout out to Sword and Shield for breaking some old Pokemon and flip turn for momentum. So good. This partner with Barrascuda beats down each other's checks. It's very hard to bring enough Pokemon to counter both of them. You might have a bulky grass on your team. Well, now you're going to have to take a Life Orb Hurricane. You might have a bulky water on your team. Well, now you're going to have to take a Specs Draco Meteor. It's not that easy to check both Barrascuda and Kingdra, and they will break for each other at times this season. So I came into this like, this is a fun team, but I, I genuinely think this team is powerful. Like, I think the synergy here is good. I think it's strong. I think it hits hard. I think it's brainless, and we all know I haven't got a brain, so hey, I love it. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to use Kingdra. A great shiny as well, which you can't see here. Um, yeah, Twister's going to put in the work, I think. But, you know, we've got one Swift Swim, two Swift Swim, three Swift Swim. We've got a Dry Skin. But have we got enough rain? Do we have enough rain? I don't think so. So we're going to take Zoom Turtle for another Swift Swim user. I wanted a Flying Resist. I looked at my team. I looked at Venusaur, which I wanted to bring in a lot of weeks. And I saw Heliolisk was my only Flying Resist right now. And I was like, hmm, that's loose. If I played an offensive Flying type, if I play like a Mandibuzz, I don't really care. You can bring Banded Mandibuzz. It ain't going to break through like a, a Seismitoad even. Um, but... If I want to play against an offensive flying type, I might struggle right now. So I picked up Zoom, Zoom Turtle, the Dreadnought here. Um, it's actually decently physically bulky, right? So we can come in on like a banded Brave Bird. Let's say we just play a Bravery Area and they don't click CC. We can come in on that and then we outspeed it in the rain and we can start doing damage. I understand people think Dreadnought is bad, but it's a tier 4 pickup on a rain team. Its speed tier isn't even bad to begin with. They're like 74. It's okay. I, I think people give this one too hard a time. I think it can be okay. And in tier 4, I'm fine with okay. It's another stealth rocker to help out with Seismitoad, which right now is very pressured to run rocks. This thing can be an offensive rocker. Won't be very often, but it can be. Um, I think it's a good pick. I think it's a good pick. Speaking of stealth rockers, another mon that Leo dropped. Originally in this slot, I had Ponyard. Obviously now picking up my dark type in Zoroark, I don't need Ponyard. So instead I needed a Fairy because I dropped Rabombi. So shout out to Leo for dropping this as we pick up Clefairy. Um, I think this is actually solid. Okay, I can't have Clefable to wish pass into Seismitoad. But I can have Clefairy to wish pass into Seismitoad. It's not quite as good. It's okay. It still gets wish. It's st I think it still gets wish, right? I don't know if it gets wish. I'm going to run soft build on it every week, I think, anyway. But it gets teleport. That's a really important thing. It's a fat fairy to check dragons. It does get teleport, and it does get stealth rock. I'm now questioning if it gets wish. I don't think I'm ever going to run wish on it. Its HP stat isn't good enough. This isn't the point. The point is, another rocker, good fairy, good teleport momentum to get in Barrascuda and Kingdra. we got quite a lot of momentum on this team with U-turn Zoroark, U-turn Volt Switch Heliolisk, teleport Clefairy, U-turn... Um, Pelipper and flip turn Barrascuda and a Kingdra. So lots of nice momentum to get our wall breakers in. Lots of offensive pressure. And I'm all about that offensive pressure. This is an EWT where we're just throwing offensive pressure out the window as we go into Claydol or some shit. We're keeping up. We're keeping the momentum. We're going. We're going. We're winning. We're in rain. We're, we're happy. And speaking of winning, shout out to Luana Le Clefairy. We got a round two pick as our penultimate pick. I know, you might think round two pick. What is a round 
two pick. By definition, a round two pick is big diglet. Really big diglet. We want to win games, so we need a diglet on our team. Okay, no one's going to bring fire types against the rain team, so we ain't going to be trapping any fires. But they are going to bring electric types. And all right, you want to bring your Zera Aura. Now you have to run Shed Shell. Or my Scarf Doug Diggler is going to trap you. All right, you want to bring your... I'm trying to think of other monsters that can trap. Copperaja to try and take hits from my Venusaur. Fine, I'm going to trap you. I'm going to Earthquake you. It probably won't do much, but it might in some matchups force Shed Shell on certain Pokemon. So now Zera Aura doesn't have its Life Orb to click Grass Knot on my uh, Seismitoad. It might not force a monster in Shed Shell, and I might just catch them with Scarf Earthquake and kill them, or Sash Earthquake and kill them. Getting Hazards up against my team isn't going to be easy with the amount of offensive pressure on it, so I can run Sash on this thing. Um, in general, I think Diglett's good. I, I actually wholeheartedly don't see this as just a meme. And yes, I made him really, really big because it's a bit of a meme and gave him exclamation marks. But I do think Diglett has usage. I've been using it in another league in Gen 8 and I've actually brought it to like three games and it's got like three kills. So what more can you want in life, really? Uh, from a free tier 5 pickup to balance out all my tier 2s that I had spam. That's why Pelipper, Barrascuda and Kingdra all went in the free pick slot. They're all tier 2s, so... I had to balance that out somehow, and, and I think this is the best way possible. Extra rocker as well, why not? Now, leave down in the comment section what you think my final pick is. I want to hear the guesses. I want to see how many of you get it right. I think most, if not all of you, will guess this right. If you look at my team, what am I missing right now? What fits in tier 1 perfectly on this team and is a staple on rain? I mentioned it earlier in the video. What could it be? Well, we picked up our tier 1 pick right at the end with a round 11 Rosebush the Ferrothorn. Great hazard setter now. So we've got rocks on Seismitoad, rocks on Clefairy, rocks on Dreadnought, rocks on Diglett, rocks on Ferrothorn, and spikes. Oh, rain with spike support, so good. You want to hit me with fire coverage moves, non-stab? I ain't going to do that much in rain. I'm a Ferrothorn. So... I think this is a powerful pickup to finish off the team. Really good steel type because our fairy is Clefairy, which is good, but it's not great. Well, we have a great steel. So now your Dragapult, well, it isn't going to break me quite as easily by just running DD Steel Wing, right? It's got to bring some other moves like Fire Blast. Well, I've got Rain for that, etc., etc. So we're just kind of pressuring things, trying to spread out the weaknesses and coverage as much as we can. And uh, yeah, picking up a good steal. So we do have double grass. This team is going to upset so many people, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five water types. We have double grass. Uh, we have double ground. People are going to be like, ah, so many fighting weaknesses. Ah, like people are not going to like a lot of aspects of this team. And I get that. But I wanted to draft just rain, spam, HO pretty much. Let's just bring rain offense. Let's watch things die. Let's have games that all finish in under 30 turns and just enjoy a season of clicking buttons and laughing. That's, that's all I really want. So I am, if you can't tell, delighted with this team. I am so excited to use it. I think it's powerful, but let me know what you guys think down below. I'm just excited to use Bangs, the G-Max Venusaur. Definitely up there is one of my favorite Pokemon. I just love its big floppy hair. I think it's so funny. Um, yeah, I can't stop smiling. I love this team. I can't wait for this season. Hopefully you guys can't too. Week one, we go up against mid Pokemaster. My son, the snake, who has cheated me in almost every game we've played previously. But I have it on record that he cannot defeat me when I have a ground water type. So... Maybe Seismitoad can come through, who knows. That's week one, I think it's a 10 week season, so we've got a lot of fun games to look forward to. I'm not expecting too much, I'm not saying we're going to win a championship, I'm just going to say we're going to have a good time. Thank you so much for loafing around with me, and I'll catch you again next time.